Hello, uh, short one today, if uh, such a thing is possible from me. Vertebral veins, a little bit of anatomical clarity. They don't even get mentioned in textbooks much, so maybe this is a little bit of an overindulgence, but uh, vertebral veins, don't mix them up with the vertebral venous plexus or other things, and they're a bit like the vertebral arteries, and they're a bit not. We're in an exam period as well, so I've got a lot of time anyway. Vertebral veins. The vertebral arteries are so called because they are running within the transverse foramina. So in the transverse processes of these vertebrae, there are holes. In that hole, we find the vertebral artery running. It comes from the subclavian artery. It runs up and then through foramen magnum, uh, so the left and right vertebral arteries then converge to become the basilar artery. They are major arteries supplying blood to the brain. The vertebral venous plexus, which we have talked about, there are internal and external parts. Um, these are plexuses of veins running the entire length of the vertebral column, kind of, well, in the vertebral canal, so kind of within it and without it. And they are draining blood from the bones of the vertebral column and the other structures associated with the vertebral column, the connected tissues, the joints, um, the spinal cords in there, the connect, all that sort of stuff, right? The vertebral venous plexuses. So when we say the vertebral vein, what do we mean? We mean the veins that are running with the vertebral arteries, but they're a little bit different. <laughs> I got a blue pipe cleaner to represent veins, but it's a bit of a waste of time because, oh no, it goes through the first one. Actually, okay, maybe it's not a waste of time. Right, so this vertebra here, this is C1, the first cervical vertebra, also known as the atlas because it is supporting the skull. And up here, so superior to this, we find um, branches from the vertebral venous plexuses collecting here. There is a deep cervical vein deep in the neck collecting blood from the deep muscles of the neck and what have you. And the back of the head here, the occipital region, we have veins from the scalp. So the skin and the tissues outside of the skull, they are draining blood through occipital veins back here. So here we have a collection of veins from at least those and some other little ditties as well. Occipital veins, deep cervical veins, vertebral venous plexus veins, they converge here and this is where the vertebral vein begins. So it is not draining blood from the brain like the vertebral arteries supply blood to the brain. So it's not completely the opposite, but with the vertebral artery running through these transverse foramina, we will find, and not really a single vertebral vein, but like a pair or a plexus of veins following the artery down through vertebrae C1, C2, C3, C4, C5 and C6. And actually we can see that the vertebral artery leaves at C6. There is a hole in C7 in the transverse foramen, but uh, the vertebral artery runs down through the first six, the superior six cervical vertebrae and the vertebral veins, the plexus of vertebral veins run with it. Now when the vertebral vein leaves that route down here through that transverse foramen at C6, then we see more of a single vein, the vertebral vein. So it's here. Check out this model, different model, but um, same sort of thing. So we've got the brachial plexus on here. Ignore that. We're looking at the red again. There is the vertebral artery descending through the first one, two, three, four, five, six cervical vertebrae transverse foramina. And then it runs, well, okay, this is where it comes from because we're thinking about the direction of flow. This is the subclavian artery here, right? So the subclavian artery is where the vertebral artery runs from. And I wanted to show you this. Oh, why is that coming out? I wanted to show you this so that you'd have an understanding of 
where these structures are in relation to each other because the vertebral vein, I haven't got to show you, but it's going to run in the same direction, right? That is to say that the vertebral vein will run with the vertebral artery, but it'll run anterior to the subclavian artery. Remember, the subclavian vein is anterior to the subclavian artery. So the vertebral vein is going to run from the cervical vertebrae with the vertebral vein <laughs> anterior to the subclavian artery and posterior to the subclavian vein. And then, <laughs> okay, so if we look at this model, we're now going a little bit more superficial, right? A bit more anterior, we're adding the veins on. So here you can just see the subclavian artery curving around there and likewise on the opposite side as well. Here's the subclavian vein, here's the internal jugular vein, where they come together, they form the brachiocephalic vein. So the, the, the vertebral vein we were just looking at, we saw it run anteriorly with the vertebral artery, which runs to the subclavian artery. The vertebral vein will continue between the veins and the arteries, and then it will drain into the brachiocephalic vein. So it doesn't have to go much further at all, right? Because these guys are right next to each other at this point. The vertebral veins will drain their blood into the brachiocephalic vein. There is a vertebral vein on either side doing each of these things, draining into the two brachiocephalic veins. All right, the vertebral veins. Oh. So then, the vertebral veins are draining blood from the back of the head, um, the cervical vertebrae, and the deeper muscles of the neck, really. Um, and as those, that plexus of veins descends through the neck, it will pick up other branches and other bits nearby. Um, so it's not draining blood from the brain. That is largely the internal jugular vein and the vertebral venous plexus that's doing that. Um, so I said that, the vertebral arteries and the vertebral veins travel through the transverse foramina of the first six cervical vertebrae, but we also see a hole in the seventh. And those two veins, so that, well, you know, a pair, a plexus of veins running with the vertebral artery, the, um, the vertebral vein travels as we just described, but there's an accessory vertebral vein, which continues as like the other vein in that plexus. And that will actually drop down through the seventh cervical vertebrae's um, transverse foramen, and then also run and drain to the brachiocephalic vein. Do you see what I mean about this being a little bit, um, a little bit gratuitous. <laughs> Who needs to know this? I don't know. It's just that if you know about the vertebral artery, it feels like we should talk about the vertebral vein anatomy. And I think mostly it's because I want people to know that there's a vertebral vein, that it matches the vertebral artery, it does a slightly different job, and that they then don't mix it up with the vertebral venous plexus. I don't want people saying vertebral vein when they mean vertebral venous plexus. I want them to say vertebral venous plexus because this is the vertebral vein. Is that, is that fair? <laughs> Maybe. There you go. The anatomy of the vertebral veins. An easy tick in my opinion. And sometimes you just need to know that little bit extra information so that everything else is logical uh, and easier to remember and communicate. And anatomy is about communicating accurately bits of the body to each other. Um, also, sometimes anatomy is a little bit like mountaineering, right? Um, you study it because it's there. <laughs> Just me, maybe. Okay, see you next week.